Um, yeah, I'm quickly going to finish off with the mutation, which is a similar kind of thing. It's still a, a cross synthesis between two sound files. Um, I confess that I don't really know the mechanics of it, but I don't. Once again, I don't think that's too critical. We'll keep stick with our delicate piano sound. Um, <coughs> so choose mutation, um, and this time you get another um, rather uninspiring window come up, as usual. Um, again, we have a series of bands, uh, which also represent the window length. Um, so bands in the frequency domain, we're talking vertically, um, but also we're talking the length of the window. So you will get a different result from a longer window length to, to what you will with a shorter window length. Um, you also have a type here. Now, once again, I, I'm not entirely sure what these refer to, um, and frankly, I don't think the results are significantly different between them. Um, but once again, it's probably something you should just try different ones and see what you get. Um, I'll turn that off. Uh, once again, it's you need a, a, a target. Well, in the case of convolution, it was impulse. This is a target file, um, so we will choose. Uh, let's choose Bongo Groove because that was kind of interesting last time. See what we get from that. <coughs> um, and uh, I won't bother to timescale target, although, as you can imagine, that does very much the same as the moving function in convolution insofar as it stretches the target file to the same length as your original file here uh, before it processes. Um, yeah, okay, we'll try that without messing about with any of this stuff. Process that. Uh, so we'll call it mutate. Right. Oh, there was a long time. There was a time when this used to take forever to do. Now that's interesting. It's only made it the same length as the um, as the target file, which surprises me somewhat. Okay, all right. Well, it just sounds like a uh, a filtered sound at the moment. We'll try again. Uh, mutate again. <coughs> uh, let's go for a slightly smaller window length. Uh, we'll go to two five six. And uh, just pick the same target. Bongo groove. This time we will time scale the target. Oops. So once again, this is going to make Bongo Groove approximately 12 seconds in length. And we'll call it mutate 2. Okay, are you done? There we Okay, unusual. Um, same thing again, we'll try. So, mutation again. Uh, <coughs> this time with a longer window length. And uh, once again, the same target. Let's see what that gives us. When I used to do this uh, 12 years ago, um, when I was doing my undergrad, this was the first time I started using SoundTac, and this used to take forever to process. Um, once again, uh, slightly quite FFT, but still kind of interesting. Um, what I'm going to try to do now, sticking with the same kind of thing, um, once again we have a function uh, window, um, so or func function function, uh, so edit function gives us the same window as we've come across before, uh, and this time theoretically uh, if you go towards the top um, the sound is closer to uh, one of those sounds, if you go to the bottom, it's closer to the other sound in terms of the output um, sound. Um, I can't remember which one's which, to be honest. Again, suck it and see, see what you get. 
Um, so we will I'll move it from one side to the other and back again so that you can hopefully hear it change. Oops. Oh, come on. That'll do. Smooth that. And maybe just get it to go to the end. Again, it's being unresponsive awkwardly. No mind, that'll do. Uh, done. And. Oh, I haven't pitched over yet. So, bongo groove again. And once again, we've time scaled it. So, hopefully, it will give us our 12 seconds. I'll process that. And turn it So the bottom sounds closer to the piano and we'll go back towards the bongo again. Right, so you kind of get a slightly stretchy bongo groove sound, but it, it's, uh, you can get some quite nice results from that. What I do find with mutators is that if you go for smaller window lengths or, or a sort of lower number of bands, um, you get a very watery um, quality from your output. Um, and it's a very characteristic effect as well. So you might find that after a while you get a bit sick of it. Um, however, it's uh, it's another one which produces some interesting, and uh, depending on the sounds you try with it, some very unexpected and interesting results. So it's worth a try. So that's sound hack. I think that probably covers most things. Um, it's a pretty powerful package. Spectral extractor and spectral analysis does the same kinds of things that you will find in Audio Sculpt. QT coder, I'm not entirely sure what that does. Normalize does what it says on the tin. Um, spectral dynamics, once again, is another spectral tool which you'll find elsewhere. So I think the ones that I've shown you um, are the most interesting ones. Um, so have a go with that. Uh, so it's a free package, so you can download it for the Mac if you have a Mac. <laughs>